A massive earthquake hit Turkey and Syria last night, and already hundreds of deaths have been reported. Even though these countries are sworn enemies of the state of Israel, you can probably guess who was one of the first countries to offer humanitarian aid to help. Yep, Israel. The IDF got into a shootout with a new Hamas terror cell in Jericho while trying to arrest two terrorists who had attempted to shoot up a restaurant near Jer Jericho just last week. And some good news, Israel is demolishing illegal Arab structures in East Jerusalem. I'm Josiah and this is The Israel Guys. Welcome to the Israel Guys, where we believe that in a world of Jew hatred and anti-Israel propaganda, you should have a direct connection to the land and people of Israel. And that's us here at the Israel Guys. Guys, welcome back to the show. Uh, great to be back with you again this week. Uh, first off, make sure and subscribe, like we always say. But also, if you hit that like button, it seems like a very simple gesture. But the YouTube algorithm loves the like button. So if you guys just spam the like button and smash that. Uh, as many times as you can, which is only once. But if all of you smash the like button, uh, maybe we'll pop our video into the algorithm. We'll get the truth out to more people. We would greatly, greatly appreciate it. We are climbing in subscribers. We'd love to hit 100,000 subscribers this year. We are almost at 60,000 just now. It's a big goal, but we believe that you can do it. Um, also, if you share our videos on social media and around to your friends who uh, want to know about Israel, want to learn about the truth in Israel, that also greatly helps us grow here at the Israel Guys. We greatly appreciate that. Follow us on all our social media pages as well. Guys, if you hear any of the uh, noises here in the studio today, it's because Israel is actually experiencing a massive windstorm throughout the entire country. They actually named the storm uh, Winter Storm Barbara, and it's uh, expected to bring very high winds of up to 100 kilometers per hour. Uh, intense cold and heavy rain throughout the center and north of Israel. Also think they're expecting some flooding uh, down south in the Judean desert. So if you hear maybe some noise, uh, the wind and even the rain on the studio, you'll know exactly uh, what that is, what we're facing here in Israel today. Uh, Israel is experiencing rain, which is a good thing. They don't get rain uh, for the rest of the year, only in the winter months here. Also, today is Tu Bishvat. And if you guys do not know what Tu Bishvat is, uh, it's basically the new year for trees here in the land of Israel. It's also a holiday where all of Israel thanks God for the life that God brought back to the land of Israel. Uh, people get to, we, you go around and you taste all the different fruits and the spices uh, of the land of Israel that they're growing here in Israel. Uh, it's, it's just a great holiday, but it's also a day to plant trees in Israel. Israel. Um, and you know he, us here at the Israel Guys, we are planning to plant 20,000 trees before the end of the year here in the biblical heartland of Israel. So it's a great day to go to greeningisrael.com and sponsor a tree. You can sponsor a tree there on the website and we will plant it here in the ground within the next six months. We have uh, quite a few trips coming up. We're going to actually go out and plant these trees here in the land of Israel. So uh, we encourage you to go to greening, greeningisrael.com Plant a tree today in honor of Tu Bishvat for the holiday of Tu Bishvat, and we will get that planted here in the ground in Israel. Link is in the description below. All right, guys, massive news this morning we woke up to, and uh, actually I didn't myself didn't hear it, but some people didn't feel it, but some people here in Israel actually felt uh, the effects of this earthquake. But the this earthquake, massive uh, hit in Turkey, mainly affecting Turkey and Syria, and already reports of a lot and a lot of people, a uh, lot of casualties and with, with many, many injured as well. Um, it appears that the earthquake originated in central Turkey. Uh, it occurred at 4.17 4 a.m. local time this, this morning, Monday morning. It measured 7.8 on the Richter scale. Massive earthquake. Um, and, and it's the biggest one we've seen in this region for a very long time. Um, already reports of over 100 buildings have collapsed in uh, one town in Turkey. I just saw the town of Malata, uh, Malatay, Taya. 100 buildings just in the one town alone collapsed. So you can imagine uh, throughout that whole region, if it's being felt both in Turkey and in Syria, or not being felt, but the major effects of it in both those countries, can't imagine the the damages, and we have uh, quite a few pictures and videos we can throw up um, of the damages. Obviously, a lot of this is taken in the dark before it got light, but uh, crazy, crazy stuff happening uh, over in Turkey. There's uh, We have a video here of a building actually collapsing. Somebody captured it on video. Building just goes straight to the ground, uh, collapses, and also there was a uh, gas line that exploded 
uh, somewhere in Turkey as well. So a lot of damage happening there, a lot of loss of light, uh, life. Excuse me. Turkey has declared a state of emergency, a level four state of emergency, and has requested international aid. Um, already reports of over 568 deaths in southern Turkey and 284 deaths in Syria uh, have come in with hundreds and hundreds of more uh, reported being injured. Um, as I said before, this earthquake seems to be mainly affecting these two countries, but uh, the earthquake was felt, I believe, in uh, quite a few countries around, around Iraq, Lebanon, uh, Cyprus, as well as here in Israel. Uh, they say here in Israel, it was the earthquake is felt on a three magnitude scale. Uh, people all over the country, I believe the police said that they received over 3,000 reports of people uh, waking up and feeling this earthquake taking place in Israel. I didn't feel it myself. Maybe that's just because I'm a hard sleeper. Um, but uh, a lot of people here in Israel actually felt the earthquake and felt uh, some effects of that. Someone in Haifa said, uh, because of the strong winds outside, I thought it was the arrival of the storm. Barbara, long seconds passed before I realized that the earthquake was inside the house. Uh, so she woke up and felt that earthquake happening. Uh, no injuries or damages reported here in Israel. Thank God. Uh, seems to have been very, very uh, slight. Not being able to uh, do too much damage taking place from uh, the rumble and the shake. Um, Hanania Naftali, who works for the prime minister's office, uh, tweeted out and said, Breaking massive 7.8 magnitude earthquake strikes Turkey and Syria. More than 200 people are dead. Uh, this is earlier, uh, a couple hours ago. Israel is preparing to extend immediate assistance to Turkey. And uh, just, yeah, just like he said, uh, just hours after the earthquake, the IDF offered to provide humanitarian aid as well as rescue services um, to any anybody that would receive them, to Turkey and to Syria. Um, Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, made a statement and said, quote, our security forces are prepared to provide any aid that we will be required. The defense establishment is experienced in responding to emergency scenarios and saving lives, end quote. Uh, that's from the defense uh, defense minister, Yoav Gallant. Uh, so as you can see, the IDF and Israel, we've seen it many, many times before, natural disasters or emergencies take place across the world. Doesn't matter where Israel is always, always one of the very first countries to offer their support and aid. And, and more times than not, they end up uh, sending aid over or sending a team of uh, rescue, uh, rescue services over to those countries to actually help and try to uh, help restore order, help people, pull people out of the rubble, all the things like that. And even though both Syria and Turkey are, you could say, sworn enemies of Israel, Israel, that doesn't deter Israel from going and offering um, to help and to uh, to offer their, their their humanitarian aid and to rescue services to their enemies uh, to help them. They're, they're, the, Israel is interested in saving lives no matter who it is. They don't care who it is. They, they are for saving lives. The preservation of life is very important to the Jewish people and the state of Israel. Uh, so amazing to see that happening, even though Israel... Uh, they weren't damaged by the earthquake, but they're offering to help uh, these countries that were. So continue prayers for those uh, in Turkey and Syria who are suffering from this uh, massive, massive uh, emergency, terrible, terrible thing. Um, and also to the families of the victims who have already died. And I'm sure the more numbers will be rolling in. An event like this, it's going to take days and days to, to actually get an account of uh, how many people were, were killed and injured in this uh, horrible catastrophe. Here in Israel, the... Um, more specifically here in Judea and Samaria, the IDF have been working to stop terrorism. They've been working to go in and uh, arrest terrorists who are operating inside of these Palestinian communities, these Palestinian towns and cities. Um, just last Saturday, two Hamas terrorists with weapons, so this is uh, not two days ago, but the uh, week before, two Hamas terrorists with weapons and military vests arrived at a restaurant in Vered Yericho, a Jewish restaurant, and attempted to open fire on the 30 people that were at the restaurant. Thankfully, the terrorist weapons jammed and they had to flee. Uh, they fled back to Jericho. So since then, the IDF has been trying to figure out where these guys are. They succeeded, found out exactly where they're from, and also um, figured out that there's this new terror cell, uh, Hamas um, affiliated terror cell. They're calling themselves the Aqabad Jeb Jabbar Battalion, and they, the name comes from the refugee camp inside of Jericho, which is the Aqabad Jabbar refugee camp. Uh, they, they made their announcement, I think sometime last week, might have been before, uh, that they're basically forming this new, they call it a battalion. Basically, it's a terror cell. It's, it's Hamas affiliated. It's a terror cell. Their, their goal is to kill 
civilians kill Jews inside uh, the state of Israel. So uh, the IDF figured all this out. And last night, they went into Jericho, went into this refugee camp to take out the, uh, the terrorist. As they went in, the terrorist and their accomplices opened fire on the IDF and a massive shootout or major uh, shootout ensued uh, between the terrorists and the IDF. According to Palestinian reports, a number of Palestinians were killed with at least three uh, wounded. And I'm sure if you look on the mainstream news, uh, if you look at Reuters and CNN and the Washington Post, and New York Times, they'll all tell you that uh, um, there were Palestinians uh, killed and maybe they'll say clashes in the West Bank or they'll say um, in a uh, military raid on Palestinian village, something like that. I didn't even look. I'm not, not going to look, so I'm just going to predict the headlines. Uh, you guys can go check it out if you want. Uh, put it down in the comments if, if I'm right on any of those, uh, those headlines with CNN, or any of the mainstream news media, maybe Al Jazeera as well. Uh, see how they twist the headlines. But you know that the IDF went in to arrest terrorists who were uh, guilty of trying to commit a terror attack, and uh, a battle ensued with, with those terrorists and their friends, and this is the result. All right, guys, uh, I'm going to give you your, uh, maybe we'll call it the fake news slash misinformation tweet on Israel uh, for the day. Uh, so I was on Twitter and one of the, I saw a tweet from someone who lives actually here in uh, uh, here in the West Bank, Judea and Samaria. I think he lives in one of the Palestinian towns around this area. And uh, he tweeted out a video of a man in the old city being detained by the IDF. And uh, I thought uh, what he said was just uh, just very, very interesting. Uh, so this tweet says, this guy laying on the floor is Daoud Bitar. He forgot his bag at the door of his house in the old city. Israeli occupation forces thought it was explosives, so they detained him and summoned huge forces to the area before arresting him and confiscating his bag. Uh, so the video shows uh, there's a man lying on the floor on the, uh, on, on the ground in the old city, the streets of the old city, with several IDF soldiers standing around him, or standing there in the, uh, in, in the street, uh, detaining him. Um, and then this guy uh, adds to his tweet, he says, P.S., imagine Israeli forces doing this to an Israeli Jew in the old city. Exactly. I said, imagine for a reason. Uh, and that, was, that was his tweet. Um, <laughs> it's very interesting because I don't really even feel like I need to add to the tweet because he kind of speaks for himself. He says, imagine Israeli forces doing this to an Israeli Jew in the old city. And then he says, you know, exactly. I said, imagine for a reason because it's not happening. Um, maybe there's a reason why it's not happening. Why Israel, why um, Israeli forces aren't detaining Israeli Jews in the old city because Jews don't go around uh, stabbing Arabs. They don't go around shooting up um, uh, synagogues and they don't go around uh, exploding suicide, uh, exploding bombs or, or uh, committing suicide bombings in crowded places of uh, innocent Arab civilians. That's not happening. So maybe that's why Israel is not stopping Israeli Jews. And maybe there's a reason why, why they are stopping this Palestinian who left a bag unattended, very suspicious, um, in the old city of Jerusalem. And if you guys know, that's not, uh, that's not un, un, heard of for security forces to maybe detain somebody who left their bag unattended to confiscate the bag to figure out what's in it. Not very, not very odd. Uh, but yeah, this is a misinformation. This is the fake news tweet for the day um, of what uh, this guy posted. Something happened in Jerusalem. Someone in the comments uh, re responded uh, to his tweet and said, yes, but uh, what's your point? Uh, somebody else tweeted and said, why would they think that? Why do we have to go through security at the airports and little old ladies have to take off their shoes? So unfair. Why don't we just take the chance? Um, that's a very <laughs> hilarious uh, response to that one. Somebody else said, with a history of the conflict in view, it's a completely reasonable response. Yes, absolutely. Completely reasonable response to the IDF. Uh, I found it, fu found it funny, too. He said... Um, Israeli occupation forces thought it was explosive, so they detained him and summoned huge forces, huge forces to the area to arrest him. I think you can look in the video and count maybe like one, two, three, four, five, maybe five police officers that detained him there. Uh, so massive, massive army came in and stopped this guy uh, who was just going to get groceries, uh, right? Somebody else commented, said, sucks to be in a, in a culture that promotes and glorifies suicide bombings, your problem. Unfortunately, yeah, that's the case. Um, you're in this culture, this religion, this uh, this this place that promotes this, teaches it to their children, uh, spews the propaganda forth, pays terrorists to go and kill Jews. It kind of is uh, your problem, and uh, this is not at all a factual. Uh, it's a factual tweet, but it's uh, 
the spin that he was putting on it is not factual at all. Very, very much misinformation. That's what's happening on Twitter. Uh, there's a lot more, but uh, yeah, that's the one I saw and thought I would share with you guys for the day. All right, guys, we're going to close out with some good news for the day uh, happening in Israel. And this is thanks to our new the uh, the new national security minister here in Israel, Itamar Ben Gavir. He uh, just this last week told the police or gave an order to the police to speed up the process of demolition on an illegal Arab structure in East Jerusalem. This structure houses around uh, 100 residents and has had a demolition order against it actually for many, many years. Uh, so you may ask, why was this not destroyed for, before if it's had this demolition order against it for, for quite some time now? Um, and we've talked about it a lot before on the show, but there are many factors behind uh, the delay of demolitions, uh, de demolition orders against Arab structures. And with the previous gov government, we hardly saw that at all, uh, the destroying any Arab structures that had a demolition order against it, illegal uh, mind you, all these are illegal Arab structures. Um, but one of the factors is the massive international and foreign pressure on Israel's government not to destroy uh, Palestinian structures. Structures They don't care if they're illegal. Um, they, there's a lot of pressure for Israel not to do that. Also, uh, the government itself not having, having the courage to actually carry through with demolition orders. They can order the demolition, and that's like a big, you know, maybe a show of strength. But then a lot of times they don't have the actual courage to actually carry through and and, and demolish these illegal Arab structures, completely 100% illegal, um, and in this case, in East Jerusalem. Um, thankfully, the new National Security Minister, Itamar ben Gavir does not lack this courage, and already, um, since he has been in office, seven of the 14 illegal structures in East Jerusalem that uh, were slated for demolition, seven of the ones he ordered to be destroyed have already been destroyed. So all these have have demolition orders against them. He ordered 14 of these to be destroyed immediately. Seven have already been destroyed, and he's trying to expedite this process for this other building. Uh, this is a larger structure in East Jerusalem to be destroyed. Uh, ben Gavir said, he told uh, Khan News, he said, quote, we need to enforce the law. That's my policy, end quote. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's about it. Itamar Ben Gavir wants to enforce the law. The law is that these buildings need to be destroyed, so he's carrying through and he has the courage to actually carry out the law, to actually tell the police, yes, we're going to go through with this. And even um, some uh, security advisors were saying that they shouldn't demolish this building because it could spark uh, security un uh, unrest or, or violence um, in the old city. And I think last week when they were demolishing some uh, buildings in, e in East Jerusalem, uh, Arab youth blocked the road uh, to, to traffic, to the police. Uh, so things like that. So it could could spark un uh, could uh, spark riots and and potentially a uh, protest from the Arab community but Itamar Ben Gavir is not like I said before he's not afraid and he 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 want, he's he's there to carry out the law to uh to fulfill it uh, this is the law and this is what needs to happen guys don't listen to things you hear in the media coming out against Israel like we saw on the Twitter thing uh there's actually very uh, if you know anything about the conflict, it's very easy to explain. It's very, uh, but uh, obviously the media puts a, a crazy spin on everything that is happening. Remember, remember that Israel is always one of the first countries to help even their enemies in times of need. And I'm sure we will see very soon Israel, if Turkey allows them, um, Israel to be sending a, a crew of uh, humanitarian aid over to Turkey to help with the, uh, the rescue of uh, people. Um, in those affected areas. That is if Turkey actually allows them. The guys, subscribe. Make sure to get that conversation going down below and go to greeningisrael.com. Click the link in the description below to plant a tree in Israel today. Um, and make your mark, make a lasting difference on the land of Israel. Help bring it back to life. Link is in the description below. In the meantime, tune out the fake news and tune into what is actually happening here in the land of Israel. We'll be back every day, Monday through Friday, with your direct connection to the land and people of Israel.